<laughs> Early on a crisp, moody, foggy morning at Stevens Pass, two women prepare for their journey. Anastasia Allison pulls on her backpack. Even last night, I had a hard time sleeping because I'm thinking about it and I'm so excited. Rose Freeman covers a much larger load, wrestles with it, and then against all odds, hoists her burden up and secures it to her back. It's good. Got a little pillow. Anastasia waits and here comes Rose. And the two of them set off clomping up the mountain like wilderness explorers, which they are. By the time they get to the edge of Skyline Lake, the blowing crystals of snow and the fog have combined to form a frozen haze, and the two of them and their cargo, step by step, are willingly swallowed up by it. And on and on they march, blending in at times with the whiteness around them. The higher they go, the more breathtaking it all becomes. And then they reach the spot, a kind of natural amphitheater atop a ridge high up in the Cascades. We have a flat spot yet? Yeah, flattish. The cover comes off Rose's ungainly payload, and it's almost time for the happening. Moments later, the two of them disappear behind a tree and then come out again, inexplicably wearing dresses. And then, in the cold and the snow on top of a mountain, the silence is broken and they make their offering. out here and being able to play is absolutely incredible. And the silence and the stillness and how peaceful it is. I mean, this violin is this delicate, fragile thing and it, it shouldn't be in the mountains, it should be in a concert hall. But then I think, wow, my concert hall is the Cascade Range. They call themselves the Musical Mountaineers. They are classically trained, but they play all kinds of music. That concert above Skyline Lake wasn't their only unlikely performance into the emptiness. They climbed Mount Dickerman and played a song from Lord of the Rings. On Sauk Mountain in the North Cascades, they played Amazing Grace. At Artist Point on New Year's Eve, it was Auld Lang Syne. As musical artists, we sort of release these notes and then after we're done playing a piece, there's just this, this beautiful moment of, of no music. And so you have this contrast of just sort of envisioning these notes drifting up into the world. They climbed Granite Mountain and played there too. And of course the question is why? Maybe it's their gift to the world. Maybe it's their excuse to explore. Maybe it makes them feel something they can't find anywhere else. But why pick it apart? Why does there have to be a reason? This thing that the musical mountaineers do, these notes left in the wilderness, are beautiful. Every time I come out here, it's just like my entire spirit and soul is just so refreshed. Being able to bring music out to a place where it's never been before, um, it's really sweet. And isn't that reason enough?